So my name is Veronica Diamond, and I know what you guys are thinking, because I've gotten it my whole life. My whole life I've had people give me comments about my name. When I was younger, it used to be older women, and they'd hear my name, and they'd be like, oh, Veronica Diamond, gorgeous name. And they would have like that little rise up, like they were having a mini orgasm. A little weird, a little weird, but I dealt with it. Now that I'm an adult, I get a different comment when people hear my name. Now when they hear my name, they're like, Veronica Diamond, Sounds like a stripper name. It does, it does. And here's the thing, guys. I'm here to tell you, it's not a stripper name. It's not. It is a porn star name. It is. I am not the porn star. I'm not the porn star. My porn has very few views. Um, no, there is a real uh, porn star, an adult film actress. Uh, her name is also Veronica Diamond. I found her while I was vanity Googling myself. <laughs> Yeah, like Swervy said, I'm, I'm a multi-talent, but I'm like, I'm a writer, I'm a comedian, I'm a cartoonist, I juggle, I play the ukulele. When I type in my name, 11 pages of porn. <laughs> 11 pages of porn, and mine only starts on page 27. No one's deep Googling that far, right? No one's Googling that far. Um, I don't watch a lot of porn. There's been a lot of porn talk tonight, uh, and I'm gonna continue with that trend. I don't watch a lot of porn for a couple of reasons. First reason is, um, I have a very specific porn fetish, and it's very hard to find online. My fetish is called um, respecting women. <laughs> and you can find it, but you've gotta dig really deep to find it in porn. So that's one of the reasons. The other reason is um, I'm gay, and like lesbian porn is not made for lesbians. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Like, <laughs> That's just a truism. It's not made, it's made for straight guys, and it's just, it's not, it's not really what I'm super into. I'll give you an example uh, of that. I was uh, on a porn site, and I saw a title for a video, and this is the real title of the video. It said, watch this lesbian stick her shoe up her pussy. Oh. <laughs> that was the real title of it, guys. First of all, spoilers. <laughs> And second of all, like, that is, it's just, it's not a lesbian, you guys. It's a straight girl who was not paid enough money. I know that it's not a lesbian. How would you even fit a Birkenstock up there? <laughs> <laughs> there is one thing that I really like about porn sites, though, and that is the comment sections on porn sites. I don't know what person decided, oh, yeah, we're gonna put comment sections on the bottom of these videos. I don't know what person thought that was a great idea, but God bless them, right? The only, the only problem there is that they didn't name them comment sections, but you know what, that's just a, that's a little, that's a little thing. I love them because everywhere else on the internet, if you go into the comment section, it's horrible, right? It's so bad, you go on news websites, Facebook, everywhere, YouTube, they're all so terrible. I once saw a comment that said, fuck this and fuck you, you fucking fuckers. And it was on a video about cats. <laughs> Like, I don't get it. Sometimes you're reading these comment sections and at first it says like, I love Justin Bieber. And then this conversation has been going on for three years. And that same person at the bottom is like, okay, well, I guess Hitler did have some good ideas. It's like, whoa, what happened? I do not want to read through that. But the porn, the porn section, porn comments, beautiful. They're nice, they're uplifting. Everybody there is just so happy for the gift of free porn. They're just delighted. They want to tell you how hard they are and how hard they came. It's nice. It's nice. My favorite comment that I've ever seen was uh, a guy on a video and he had posted, someone get that lady a PhD in cum swallowing. <laughs> And I like that because, you know, Swervy was talking about respecting sex workers and like giving them their due. Grad programs are so expensive. So like, I think that that's, I think that that's appreciative. It's like, yeah, she does deserve a grad degree. You're right. PhD, doctor. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking, I, I wish I had a doctorate. Um, but I'm really bad at cum swallowing. <laughs> I, I guess I don't know, I've never tried. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to brag, but uh, the first time I saw a dick, I was five. <laughs> yeah, I could, not really a thing to brag about, but this is just a fact, it's a fact. It was, it's not a creepy story, it's not a creepy story. That was the last time I saw a dick when I was 12. But anyway, we'll move, 
we'll move on to a different story. We'll move on to the first time I saw Dick. I was five, um, and uh, it was my friend Mark, and he was also five. He had gone to the hospital because he had to have surgery on his penis. He had had a bump, and so he was gone for a while. He came back. I went up to play Legos with him, and I, I, we were just talking. I was asking, you know, how, how you doing? You know, I didn't really know a lot of things about the world, and uh, he was just saying, oh, yeah, it, they, they, they put me in. It was a day surgery. They cut it off, and there are stitches, and I was like, whoa, 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 wait. There are stitches? And he was like, yeah, and I was like, ah. Can I see? I was so excited to see stitches. Not at all excited to see his dick. So excited to see his stitches. So I asked him if I could see it, and he was like, yes, of course, because no guy has ever said no to the question, can I see your dick? <laughs> and so that was the first time I saw a dick. It was small and inflamed and had bright blue stitches, and the stitches were crusted with blood. Anyway, I am a lesbian. That's... <laughs> that's <laughs> Um, it's kind of weird for me to actually say that because uh, I've been co doing comedy for five years. I actually only came out last year. That was when I came out to my family and my friends. I came out when I was 28 years old and 29. So it's kind of weird for me to talk about being gay on stage. Um, and uh, I've got some, some interesting like uh, observations. I, I wrote an article recently that was on CBC about it. And, uh, oh, thank you. That's so sweet. That's so nice. That's a much better reaction than my parents had. <laughs> uh, but I wrote an article and I got uh, a lot of positive feedback from uh, from people all over the country. And it was really interesting going from like not telling anybody at all to being out on a national scale. <laughs> and it made me appreciate that like, I think I, I love the term coming out. I think that that's great. But I think we can localize it. Right? I want to have that term be localized now. I, I think that we should, uh, in Canada, we should change coming out to um, crossing the border. <laughs> I want to change, that's what I want to change coming out to, crossing the border. You cross the border from the United States of America into Canada. <laughs> that's my vision. That's my vision. And you can pick what province you want to live in. You can travel between the provinces. You can come out into Quebec if you want, or lesbian Ontario. <laughs> Man on Manitoba. <laughs> or if you're asexual, none of it. <laughs> uh, so I have some, some interesting uh, new experiences. I've uh, started dating uh, a lot more openly, and um, I find dating really hard for me. I'm a very awkward, nervous person. I have been my whole life. Just as an example, uh, when I was in high school, I used to read the dictionary for fun. <laughs> like, that's, that's who I am as a person. I read the dictionary for fun in high school. I did that into my university years, because that's when I discovered sex. <laughs> S is right at the back of the book, it turns out, so that's, that's why it took so long. So, uh, I'm not super great at dating. I uh, started a couple of online profiles, and uh, it turns out I'm not great at creating those and looking through them. I was on, uh, on a profile once, and I was looking through it, and I was like, oh, I think this person and I could really click. Like, we had all the same hobbies, and we liked all the same movies, and we just seemed really, really, like, similar people, and it took me two minutes before I realized it was my profile. <laughs> <laughs> like, I already know I would fuck me. <laughs> It's even worse dating people or like trying to date people face to face because I am so bad at talking to people like face to face. This is horrifying to me. <laughs> this is so nerve wracking, uh, but I do it because I love it. But yeah, talking to people face to face is also really awkward. Um, I'm going to tell you the absolute worst thing I've ever said to hit on a woman. Um, and it's so embarrassing that I'm going to take a sip. <laughs> So I want you guys to like be aware, just as a reminder, this is a real thing that I said to a real woman who I wanted to like me. <laughs> so I went up to her, very similar to this, I had a beer in my hand and I was like, hello, would you like a sip of my beer? <laughs> I didn't offer to buy her a beer. You guys, that is, that is number one, that is, that is, that is, that is, Flirting 101, can I buy you a beer? No. Can I offer you a sip of the beer I already have in my hand? And it gets worse. Because I continued with, do you want a sip of my beer? 
I don't have any mouth diseases. <laughs> that I know of. I've, uh, I've actually given up sort of on online dating. I've put a pause on it. I've stopped uh, online dating because uh, it's just it's too much for me. Uh, I've, I've decided to go with a different method of, de uh, of dating, which um, is just dying alone. Yeah, it sounds depressing, but the benefit is at the end you die. Oh, I'm that you know what that was maybe a little bit too sad. Was that a bit too sad? Sorry. Sometimes like my my sets can be a bit uh, sad, that's just the kind of person I am, it always happens, so I like to play a game with people to try and bring the mood up. Uh, so we're gonna play that game now, uh, and this game is called, Is This Too Sad? <laughs> so here's how we play Is This Too Sad? I'm gonna tell you true facts about my life, and you are gonna tell me if they're too sad to laugh about. <laughs> and then at the end, we all lose. <laughs> okay, so are you guys ready to play? <laughs> Yeah. All right, true fact number one. The longest relationship I've ever been in is with these shoes. <laughs> yeah. No, here's the thing. I've been, I've, like, I bought these shoes, like, five years in a row. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly, it's a, it's a decent time. And I actually like them better than any girl I've ever dated because unlike them, my shoes can't run off without me. Oh. <laughs> but it's not too sad. Uh, true fact number two. Um, I was walking down... Uh, George Street once, and a guy offered to buy my sex for an open pack of cigarettes. Uh. <laughs> That's true. And I was so offended. I was like, dude, I am worth at least a carton. Come on, dude. That's not fair. That's not cool. Uh, true fact number three. Um, my mother once told me I was starting to look good now that I'd lost some weight. Oh, we found it. That's the one. That's the one that's too sad to laugh about. Yeah, it's, that was a little, it's a little bit hard. It's a little bit hard to hear. Here's the thing. I hadn't lost any weight. I hadn't lost any weight at all. I just bought a better bra. That's all I did. It gives me the support my mother doesn't give me. So before I leave you guys, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to sing you guys a little bit of a song. Um, this is written two years ago, so it was back when I was in my period of like, oh, dicks, those are things I've, those are things I've touched and enjoy touching. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little bit, it's a little bit outdated, but uh, it's, um, I still like it. It's uh, not a song that you should ever take as solid advice, but it's a little bit of fun. It's about, has anybody ever been cheated on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it sucks, right? It really sucks. It really sucks. <laughs> And uh, sometimes when you get cheated on, like you don't really know what to do, you're all like discombobulated, and sometimes you cheat on them back, right? With a person that you know has an STD. <laughs> and then you go back and you use your body for biological warfare to get back at them. <laughs> and that's not banned by the Geneva Convention. I checked. <laughs> about that. I should also apologize, I'm not a great singer. Uh, as my grandfather used to say, the only difference between you and a whale is a whale can sing. Oh, that's too sad. That is too sad again. Yeah, it's fine, he's dead now. Yourself tested for herpes. Before 
before your dick falls off. <laughs> that's there to stay, like my endless hate for you never goes away. Expect a flare up once a year until your dying day. And there's plenty more diseases that you want to test. I picked herpes just because it fits the meter best. But having one won't stop you from contracting all the I would get it all again if I could get revenge on you. Good luck finding some other schmuck to suck your scabby wang. Think twice next time you want to find another chick to bang. Remember my face whenever you feel that itchy pang of your herpes. You've got herpes. You've got herpes. Oh, you brag about how much you score. You think you're such a player. Now you're MVP of STD, so suck it, Lady Slayer. You get schooled when you cheat. That's a lesson you should learn. Now run down to Lawton's Drugs. Go get some ointment for that burn, because you've got herpes. <laughs> you've got herpes. You've got herpes. <laughs> You've got herpes. <laughs> Don't do that. That's actually a crime. That's a terrible thing to do. Don't do that.